control pill. Um, and you'll be treated in a way that disrespects the natural ecology of your body and that treats your fertility as a disease. And uh, it, much of what is practiced there goes against Catholic teaching. So for couples who have issues with this, and a lot of people do, uh, we need to make Catholic services available. The call from Pope Paul VI in the encyclical Humanae Vitae, uh, he challenged men of science, uh, male and female, uh, to develop means of regulating fertility in keeping with the moral law. Professor Hildres was a fourth year medical student when the encyclical came out and when he read this, he felt like the Pope was talking to him personally uh, to do this and he couldn't get away from it. And he's been working in it ever since. And he saw it as an invitation uh, to rich human love. He, he saw that aspect of it. He didn't see the set of unjust prohibitions that the media were clamoring about and that the dissenting theologians were talking about. He saw it as a beautiful invitation to rich human love. So he dedicated his whole career to research in this area. And essentially what he did uh, in the end was he came up with a standardized modification of the Billings ovulation method. And he would, uh, if he's the father of the fertility care system, he would consider John and Evelyn Billings to be the grandparents of it. And the ideas that they came out with Billings uh, are what led to this uh, Creighton model system. But it's a standardized version of Billings. And uh, Billings is fantastic from a family planning point of view. But when it comes to what we do from an infertility and gynecologic health intervention, remember Professor Hildres is a gynecologist, you need a bit more detail. And this is why he standardized it so he could be able to apply uh, the best gynecologic, medical, and surgical techniques to optimize uh, uh, female reproductive health. It's based on the idea that women observe uh, the different discharges, the most important one being mucus discharge. Uh, the, the charting of the stamps is identical to Billings, but the code of description under, uh, underneath each stamp is completely different. Um, it's it's a, a very precise coded system to document exactly what the discharge looks like and we can interpret that to understand does this couple have a normal fertility potential or is there something abnormal in the fertility care charting pattern. Uh, from a family planning point of view, uh, the biggest study that they published was uh, in 1998 in the Journal of Reproductive Medicine. and. Um, I meant to bring my pointer, but at the bottom left-hand corner, uh, you get the success rate that it's 96.8% effective for 12 months of use uh, for couples who wish to use the system to avoid uh, conception, which is as effective as any birth control pill, uh, about 3% pregnancy rate per year. Whether you're dealing with hormonal contraception or a natural system of family planning, you'll never get 100%. Uh, there will always be a pregnancy rate as opposed to a failure rate. Uh, we don't regard pregnancy as a failure, uh, and uh, very much Professor Hilgers has used terminology uh, that would uh, remove the contraceptive mentality from the thinking with fertility care and NAPRA technology. When you talk about the fertility chart, you don't have safe days. You've got fertile days, because the implication, uh, you've got infertile days. The implication of a safe day is the other days are dangerous. Uh, and they're not. They're fertile or they're infertile, and you use the system according to your intentions. Uh, so very much he's very careful and I think wise with his, uh, his choice of terminology. And uh, we, we're not contraceptively biased with this, that if, uh, if couples choose to use the system to, to become pregnant, fine, that's always their choice, so long as they do it in a way that they know um, and, and they're empowered with that. Uh, that study, by the way, it was from five different centers scattered throughout the United States between 1980 and 1994, and there were 17,000 cycles studied. So it's not like it was 10 or 20 people who were highly motivated uh, and so on. It was real use of it uh, throughout five different centers in the United States with a large number of cycles. Um, uh, so we know that in practice it is highly effective for family planning. But as a result of the Creighton Model System for Family Planning, uh, NAPRO technology came to be. And NAPRO technology is a new reproductive science that is developed as a result of precise information that the fertility care system provides. So if you have a couple who wants to make a good uh, uh, choice for family planning, I would often recommend, well look, you can choose any of the natural methods, symptothermal, Billings ovula ovulation method, fertility care. I would have a preference for fertility care being a physician because I think it gives us certain medical advantages. 
Uh, but any of the systems are, would be good choices. Um, and if, especially then when you come to the, to the need for gynecologic health maintenance, NAPR technology is where fertility care really comes into its own. That's a picture of the man behind all of this. And in 1990, he coined the term of NAPRO technology. And he's done this in association with Creighton University in Omaha, Nebraska. NAPRO technology uses the most modern medical and surgical techniques to facilitate conception through normal intercourse. And yes, it is inspired by Catholic thinking. But remember, its application is universal. Any medical patient can benefit from it. It's been available in Ireland, thank God, since 1998, and we've been blessed with over 900 Irish babies. And we've been looking at our figures since uh, the start of this year, and we've had one positive, over one positive test for every working day so far in 2009 in our clinic in Galway. We've got three physicians working there, and we really have a system that's working very well uh, at, at present, thank God. Most couples come to us because they want a baby, and some would come and they'd say, well, you sound very Catholic, but I think we'll try it anyway. Uh, there are many uh, publications regarding the medical and surgical techniques that, that we apply, but they're not well known. So to overcome that information deficit, Professor Hilders uh, pulled together this uh, large textbook in 2004, uh, which is available at naprotechnology.com. And it explains uh, the, the science behind what we do with NAPRO technology. There are 1,200 pages in this and 90 chapters. Um, I contributed two chapters from a GP perspective of what, uh, what, we, what we had been doing for the early years with NAPRO technology. So any doctor can get this information. Um, in Galway, in our practice, we were the first ones to publish in a, in a scientific peer-reviewed medical journal about the success rate for NAPRO technology. So if you uh, do a Medline search in NAPRO technology, you'll find two publications, one in the Journal of Ethics and the other, uh, which is a medical journal. And this documents our success rates for the first four years of practice. And on one level, I could be proud that we were the first ones to publish the figures on it. Our crude success rate was 25% and our adjusted rate is 52%. Now, the difference between those two figures is uh, the crude rate is if somebody came to us and we know for sure that they started an upper technology medical treatment and they came back for a medical review, they're counted in our figures if they only came for two medical consultations. On average, we need about four, maybe five consultations to get a successful pregnancy. Sometimes we need about seven consultations, and it can take up to two years before we reach the conclusion to say, you know what, we've tried our best, we have to stop. So for the people who dropped out early, if we include all of those, we're getting a 25% success rate. For those who are more tenacious and stuck it out for longer, we're getting closer to 50, uh, 52%. So that's how you interpret those figures. Um, so what's new about NAPRO technology? Uh, well, it's because we use the fertility care charting system uh, to guide investigation and treatment. And the chart speaks a language to us about the couple's fertility. Thankfully, in Europe, NAPRO technology is growing. There are 23 European doctors and 75 teachers scattered throughout Europe. More information about these is available at the website fertilitycare.net. They're all listed on our website there. We've got a nice little 14-minute uh, uh, DVD presentation there as well that's well worth uh, watching if you're interested at some stage. Our average success rate is about 50% for infertility. Uh, if, even if you've had repeated failed IVF, we get about a 20 to 30% success. That's from our early figures. We're probably better now because we've copped on to things that we can do to improve the outcome for those with a history of failed IVF. So our success rates uh, seem to be improving all the time. With recurrent miscarriages, we're about 80% successful. I had one couple, uh, they had seven recurrent miscarriages. They were at every fertility clinic, um, including St. Mary's in London, uh, which is supposed to be the, the best place in Europe for investigations. And sadly, they went there without success. And we found the problem with the NAPRO technology technique. They went to the top professors. I used to get nervous treating couples who had been to different uh, consultant obstetrician, gynecologists, and then professors and top people in the field because being a GP, recommending different things, I said, well, gosh, you know, you've done everything. Maybe I might be wasting your time. 
but I've been 11 years in practice and the longer I've been in practice, the more confident I am in the techniques that we recommend because this couple that had seven recurrent pregnancy losses of unexplained cause came to us in their, in their mid-30s and they've since just recently had their fourth successful pregnancy uh, with NAPRA technology that once we cracked the code with them, we're able to get success repeatedly uh, despite her difficult history. Uh, what we do is science and medicine, but it is inspired by God. It is a work of love, and it's a vocation and a beautiful calling to serve couples who are in need. Uh, currently, I'm the director of the registered charity of uh, Fertility Care Centres of Europe. Um, uh, that was our 10th birthday party, and we had about 1,000 people came to Galway in April of last year. Uh, including 500 children that were born as a result of the NAPRA technology techniques. <laughs> and, thank you. And I just wanted to really mark the occasion, and in fact, uh, we flew Professor Hilders over because he was the origin and inspiration to this and I was really wanting the couples to recognize where this has come from, uh, but I got swamped on the day more than I had expected to. And there was an incredible thing that happened there because we experienced something of this civilization of love uh, that the Holy Father talks about in the encyclical Evangelium Vitae, uh, where there was an incredible palpable atmosphere of joy. You were talking about uh, earlier, uh, Peter was talking about the these things that you feel, uh, that, you know, that you express of yourself, that you, uh, you can't actually see it physically or touch it, but there's an atmosphere that a person gives uh, 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 you know, when you touch them and everything else. Well, it's like this whole thing was coming out of all the kids that were there, and there's this incredible atmosphere of joy. You walk into the room, and all of a sudden you go, how come I feel so good? And, <laughs> And everybody just, it was, it was really, really very, very special. And it was a thing that was unex, unexpected uh, on our part, but a, a lot of the people who were involved in, in getting fertility care up and running in Ireland were there and were very, very moved by that whole atmosphere. And that was nearly more than anything else that happened, uh, even though people said different things, it was this whole atmosphere um, that, that came, came with it. And it's a beautiful thing. And if this is what happens in a small room of a thousand people, what will it do culturally? Uh, what will it do for all the social ills that we're experiencing at the moment? There's a real imperative to, get the, to live in truth, to live in beauty, and watch what it will do for all of culture and all of society. And more than passing different laws and everything, I think what Cathy Sinnott was saying earlier, is for us to live this ourselves and promote this and watch what it does. And other people will look at the joy we have and say, I want some of that. What's this person doing? So, well, I use fertility care for family planning. <laughs> So uh, the other dimension, the NAPRA technology, which is most of the work that I do, uh, we work with the fertility care chart and we know what a normal pattern should look like. For couples of normal fertility that deliberately, knowingly use the fertile time and try to get pregnant, uh, we get about 98% of the couples will be pregnant after six months of trying. Um, so it's very effective if you, uh, to avoid pregnancy, which we've already looked at, and then when you say, actually, we're ready to try now, you start to use the fertile time, we'd expect within six cycles, most couples should be pregnant when using fertility care. But apart from just using the window of fertility, could the charts be telling us something more? And Professor Hilders and his team noticed that there was something different about the charts from couples that were suffering from infertility and miscarriage. Um, and these are different patterns of limited mucus flow um, on the first line, a very short luteal phase or second half of the cycle in the second line. The third line shows abnormal spotting, abnormal bleeding, and all of these things uh, are, are coming out of the fertility care chart that a couple are using for family planning. And even before a couple tries to get pregnant, one of our teachers, who aren't even doctors, can look at that couple and say, I know you're using this for family planning, but you're at risk of infertility, you're at risk of miscarriage. See a doctor before you even try to get pregnant, so we can avo avoid you having a year of infertility and avoid you having six or three recurrent miscarriages, because Medicine today says fertility is not a problem till you're trying for at least one year, possibly two, if you're only 30. Uh, and then we consider it a problem if you're not pregnant after two years. We've got something radically different, light years ahead of what's currently recommended, and I can't understand for the life of me how come this message keeps falling on deaf ears. 
uh, we've seen the benefits of this and any couple I would think that is, uh, wants a family planning system, I would say, well, it's good to get a handle on what is your fertility like. And this is often telling us that there's an ill health condition that's causing your reproductive system to malfunction. It's not just your reproductive system. There's some underlying ill health condition. So initially we felt this was all about reproduction. There's something wrong with your ovaries. There's something wrong here. It's your overall health. And it's not just your reproductive health, but it's your lifetime health that stands to benefit from this, which is why I'd be so passionate about fertility care and APRA technology as a family planning choice, because it opens up this whole vista of really good uh, health prevention and health care for, uh, for all of your, your health. These are all examples uh, that Dr. Hilder studied with uh, hormonal studies based on abnormal charts. In the very beginning, they did a whole load of uh, ultrasound studies, blood tests, and they were able to pull together a lot of scientific data that I'm not going to bore you to tears with um, uh, now, but just to give you the idea that a lot of scientific research, the basic hard graft scientific research of uh, ultrasound scans, uh, blood tests, correlating that with the fertility care chart. All of these things have been pulled together so that now we have a system when we just look at the chart itself, we can say, okay, we need to run a couple of tests and, uh, and put you on treatment to get normality back to your chart so your health will improve as well as your fertility. I won't go through all the details of this because I've, uh, I know we're going to run on too long, but we can predict couples at risk of miscarriage, as well as ectopic pregnancy, as well as infertility, as well as premature delivery. We see an abnormality there, we say you're an at-risk person, let's do something to sort it out. Uh, so this stunning new concept that is radically new and not within uh, current practices, by documenting the biological markers of fertility, we can assess a couple's fertility potential even before they attempt conception. We can identify the abnormal charting patterns and we can intervene uh, proactively identifying at-risk couples and helping them even before the problem officially exists. Plus, our fertility care charting pattern, this is the beauty of it, we think we get the answer and we say, well, I know what's wrong with your chart. We're going to do this, that, and the other, and we'll get your chart right. So you apply your treatment and you find the chart is still abnormal and your chart is kind of saying, you got it wrong that time, doctor, try again because uh, we've noticed different charting patterns